introduce our moderator for the first panel. His name is Mr. Glenn Stewart. He attends St. James the Last uh, in Jamaica, Queens. At St. James the Last, he serves on a vestry. He's also the youth coordinator. And professionally, he's the assistant director of pupil personnel services for Freeport Public Schools in Freeport, New York. Glenn is a licensed bilingual Spanish school psychologist with a master's degree in school psychology from LIU Brooklyn and an advanced professional diploma in school district administration from Stony Brook University on Long Island. So I'd like to ask Glenn if he could come up and I would like to ask the other panelists, Mel Kwan Stewart, Melissa Merrill, and Patrick Carranza. Did I pronounce it right, Patrick? Not even close. Patrick Kane. We'll ask him to come up. Give them a hand, please. Wow. Hi, um, I am Patrick Pomeniga. I um, serve on the bishop staff of the Diocese of Long Island with Canon Byron, who many of you may know. Um, you know, my hope is opening up some discussion. Um, about things that maybe we don't always talk about, um, and particularly in the ways that are helpful and healthy for all of us. Good morning, everyone. My name is Julissa. Yes! Yeah. I like the energy. <laughs> uh, my name is Julissa Merrill. I uh, attend Trinity St. John's in Hewlett. Um, I hope actually to get out of here that everyone feels comfortable enough speaking around your peers and also around us. Because at the end of the day, we want you guys to be able to express yourselves so that we can communicate um, to the churches what you guys want. Good morning, everyone. My name is Glenn Stewart. Good morning. Good morning. And what, <laughs> I know. <laughs> what I want to get out of this um, youth event is to get the youth out there to participate and be comfortable to ask any question you may have and also to ask questions that you know you feel that are relevant to youth not so much to adults you know we're here to just to guide you but um, we want to hear from you so this is your event we want to hear from you we're just here to guide it to the discussion but um, it's about you guys okay good morning I'm Mel Kwan Stewart um, and I attend uh, St. James Celeste Episcopal Church. Um, one thing that I hope to get out um, for you today is uh, that we can all just say what's on our minds about what we feel that we can do to change uh, our church. I, I, I have a question. Um, it would be great to have a couple of people out here. Like, what are you guys walking to the room hoping? Does anyone have? Any kind of hope or thought about what might happen today? I'm Zachary. I go to St. David's, and uh, I'm hoping that what we do here today impacts actually what happens in church. I don't want to feel like we wasted our time coming here saying stuff that doesn't really matter. So I'm hoping what we say really matters to the church. <laughs> Very, very rageful, very angry, uh, perhaps felt he was betrayed, 
but no amount of what you perceive as betrayal uh, in any way can justify you doing anything like that. Just watch as the victim tries to cover herself near a pile of trash. And Spanish Mel told the woman next to the trash is exactly where she belongs. Dr. Jeff Gardier explains what may have been going through this poor woman's mind. Well, she was probably in fear for her life, but certainly she was very, very embarrassed too. And to me, that is a, a, a really clear example of uh, torture and domestic violence. City Councilman Idanis Rodriguez was outraged. I call to the attention of the authorities to get into the investigation, find all the facts on this. And even NYC First Lady Shirley McCray said in a statement, posting that video online perpetuated the abuse, which New York City does not tolerate. Melo tried to apologize on Instagram. In one video, he even wipes away a single tear. But earlier today, he turned himself into police. Sources tell Pix11, Melo admitted he punched and choked his girlfriend before recording this degrading walk of shame. We're still waiting for Jason Mello's arraignment here at Manhattan Criminal Court. In addition to assault charges, he's also facing child endangerment charges because sources tell us he punched and choked his girlfriend in front of her three-month-old baby. Coming from Lower Manhattan, I got Harry Picks on the news. Hey, all of you heard the audio on this incident that occurred. Um, I want to get feedback from the youth. What do you feel about the incident? Um, I'll take any table. Anybody is willing to respond to it. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll start with um, us. All right. <laughs> we'll we'll start with you, Lisa. Good morning again. Just wanted to make sure everyone is here. Um, so after hearing this, the first time I actually heard about this incident was last Saturday when we all met. Um, and the, my initial reaction was, I don't, it was a mix. It was a mixture of emotions. I really truly felt bad for the um, the woman that was involved, but I also felt bad for the gentleman. Um, and I'll say, I say I felt bad for both of them because at the end of the day, you know, there's <laughs> a lot going through my mind, sorry guys. At the end of the day, we have to realize that um, what we show our children is what they will do. So at some point in his life or her life, his life pr predominantly, he saw this happening and no one in his life told him that this was wrong. So he felt that this was right. And on the woman's end, I felt bad for her because we're in public, and we're taught on MTA to, if you see something, say something. But by a show of hands, how many people would have helped her in that instance? See, that's half the room. That's half the room that would have helped her. And if we're taught, if you see something, say something, everyone's hand should have went up. Got, got, right? So the fact that no one helped her, but it was retweeted, it was shared, it was reposted, to continue that, no one flagged it, I'm sure, um, but I'm sure a couple people flagged it, but the fact that it continued to get shared, we live in a society where we'll share something before we'll say something. And why is that? Can anyone that didn't raise their hand as to why they would help her, why they wouldn't help her. Can anyone kind of get feedback on that? And again, guys, we want you guys to feel 100% comfortable sharing your thoughts. So please share, because this is the only way that we're going to be able to impact your lives. Like some people share that, you know, you want this to continue and you want your churches to change. So we need your feedback. So we want you guys to communicate with us. Is that possible? Maybe? Yes, it's possible for you guys to communicate with us, right? Yes, sir. All right, so who would like to share first? My name is Luke Ed, the church I'm working in, John. And um, in that situation, there's a guy that's holding a gun at the lady. And usually people are so quick to put up their phones instead of like helping other people in that kind of situation. 
but also for people that say that they want to help out, maybe it's because of the fact that the guy had a gun. You know, when a person, when a, when a person has a gun, there's certain danger to your life, so maybe they'll just stay back. But usually, the best thing to do is to call the police in that kind of situation. But some people think about, like, they don't think about calling the police, but they think about, like, share it to other people and say, yo, see what's the crazy thing that's going on. Like, usually fights in schools, people don't really use to call the police or tell us uh, the higher authority to break it up. They usually record it and send it to other people because, oh, well, look who I, I saw something crazy today. That's what people do on their Snapchat and so people do on their Instagrams and Facebook. But, like, but our society, which is always picking up their phone and um, sharing it to other people, why can't you guys stop it? And instead of, like, looking at it, do something about it. And that's what we have to do, like, in every kind of situation, crazy situation and calm situations too. Okay, I'm from John Physical Church. Um, but in my opinion, watching the video, people never know the background story to anything. It could be a lady on drugs, she's being crazy, or something happening. No one's going to really understand what the backstory was, or why is this woman outside walking around half naked and why is the man outside the window just saying something because you never know it could just be a guy just watching her or it could just be a lady doing something stupid people don't know the backstory on some things but even if it was them watching it or taking a video they should have stepped up called the cops or someone should have you know helped her did something to to the extent that you know people just picking up their phone and taking it is because the this society is around social media and that's the, the thing people feel like they need to record everything take pictures and do everything that's why everything gets out so easy and so quickly because the society is based on social media which is a problem and it's a factor in the world now because that's all people do so the fact that this you know people didn't step up people just shared and shared and shared i saw the video i didn't know what was going on i didn't read the background story i didn't do anything i didn't but I saw the video and I felt like it was disrespecting and demeaning to the speed now. And I felt like if she was in this situation, she could have called a friend, she could have called someone to help her. And other people who were there could have helped her. Like, I watched the people were sitting at bus stops, you know, they could have asked this lady what happened and, you know, took her somewhere and got her dressed and did all this extra stuff, called the cops. People could have took down the, he was in the car, driving away. They could have took down the license plate of the car and called the cops and did something. But people just stood around and recorded People shared the video, people made fun of her because no one knew the background story. They just thought, oh, we could be a crazy lady on drugs. She's doing what she does. And no one knew the background story, so no one knew what to do or how to help. And that's how I felt. It's my opinion. So this kind of thing happens all the time, even in more serious situations. Um, and I guess I'll make a comment, and if there's a response, that would be great. You know, I think a lot of it has to do with we don't know the backstory, and particularly with strangers, but even maybe with people we're acquainted with their friends. Um, there's this really difficult relationship between seeing something and then um, knowing, like, where's the line of me being able to stand up and say something about it? Um, like, when do I cross over that line versus letting people live their own lives, right? Like, the freedom of letting people do what they do and then recognizing when people aren't really choosing to do things that are healthy. Um, obviously, like, kind of in the video we just watched, like, no one um, making, like, a rational, healthy decision chooses to walk down the street naked while someone points a gun at them. Um, so I, I guess the question is kind of about the, the awkwardness that maybe we feel inside um, about that. And then also like our ease to say, oh, that's just crazy. And so we kind of like push it off to the side and not deal with it. Like, I don't know if that makes 100% sense, but. Okay, can anyone respond to what Patrick just uh, mentioned? Any ideas? Well, you know, like in terms of um, looking at the situation, you know, a lot of us want to be bystanders. You know, we sit and watch situations. We have time to take out our cameras and take photos of it, but no one called the police. So it's like, you know, we have it all on Instagram and that's how the guy got caught. But, you know, like we have this mentality that we're just going to 
you know, it's cute and we can take pictures of it, but nobody's helping. And I think as Christians, we have to look at it like, you know, how are we going to help each other? We're supposed to be helping our fellow men, and that was a great opportunity to do it, but no one took the time or cared enough to do it. You know, sort of becoming like a dehumanistic society where we really don't care about anybody. We see our neighbor and we're not really helping our neighbor, and that's what we call to do on this earth. It's like to help our neighbors just as we want help for ourselves. So, you know, that's, you know, what I saw, you know, in the whole, you know, audio of this and, and also sort of video, it says like, we need have to start, you know, standing up and things we see that are wrong and standing up to say, well, we need to do something about it. We can't just let it go by and like, oh, joke with our friends, it's funny. It's not funny, it's really horrendous, the situation. And, you know, I think that, you know, in the future, we have to learn from our mistakes. And what Patrick brought up was a story that happened in the 1960s with Kitty Genovese, and she was you know, stabbed and no one helped her. So it's like, here we are in 2016, similar type of situation, and no one's helping. So, you know, that's my take on the whole thing. Um, I'll have another youth um, have their take on it. Um, Mel Quan Stewart from uh, St. James Celeste. Um, when I first heard of the video, it was like, it was also um, last Saturday when we all met together to discuss this forum. And um, when I first heard about it, I did feel bad for the woman. I felt that the man sh should have dealt with the situation um, more responsibly because he was a 23 year old and um, and then I heard that nobody helped everybody just pointed and laughed and I felt at first like well what's wrong with people but um when you if you see something in like school in school like if you see a fight in school you're not gonna just jump into the fight because Everybody, everybody know. Once a once a crowd of people start circling around, two people getting ready to fight, and you fall into that circle, you part of the fight now. So if they get in trouble, you get in trouble too. And if you try to break it up, you might get hurt. And uh, you don't want to you don't want to put yourself in that situation. So going out there, just trying to trying to like stop this, stop that man. Like I personally would have would have wanted to um, call the police or do something, but at the same time, in the back of my mind, I would have been thinking, oh, I don't know who's associated with this guy. I don't know what's gonna happen to me or my family and something like that. So I do understand where the people that just, that didn't do anything are coming from. So let me, let me throw a question out there for everyone. Um, you know, because it's bigger than just what you saw in the video. But it's more of the root of, how many of you all are in a relationship? It's okay, it's okay, you can raise your hand. <laughs> Parents, close your eyes. <laughs> no, seriously, how many of you guys are in a relationship? Whether, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. It is. All right, let's, okay. So let's assume that all of you guys are in relationships at your age, which is probably the case. How would, how would you all handle emotions? Um, because I think one of the things that the video, one of the things is, is instead of chastising the responses, not to say it was right or wrong, but let's look at what the issues that were going on between the guy and the girl. Because clearly there was some big issue that the guy was upset and his only reaction or only response was to beat up on this girl and then publicly shame her. What, which I have a what's up? Yeah, um, well, I'm also knowing the guy is 23, right? Yeah. And I don't, I, from my opinion, I don't think 23 is a dose. And I think that guy is still a child, and he has a child mentality. Like, the first thing a child will do is to, like, react. Don't think, because usually children, they just react out of impulse and emotion. But as adults, people will most likely think, so I think the guy is a, a child and he has a kid that he has at home. And we don't know, we're not going to know what he's going to do with the kid. The kid's like three months and he's like 23 years old. So the guy has a child mentality and he don't want to like, he acts out of emotions, not with, maybe, 
So that's, that's really a good point that Uche brought up. But how, how does some of you guys, when you guys get angry, or when you, you're feeling like really, come up to my, you don't have to raise your hand in the same class. <laughs> you know, how, how is it that you guys express it? But then I'm going to also ask this, and this is where all the adults and the parents need to listen up. All the adults and the parents need to listen up. Everybody's in the way. <laughs> this is important because these are your youth, and your kids say they're angry, they're upset. How do you have them welcome to feel like they can say it to you that they're having this issue? Oh, uh, we ask them when people are angry. How yeah, you, how, how do you handle it? How I handle situations and certain things. When I, when I get angry, I have attitudes, and I try to distance myself from people, not talk to them, say to myself, calm down and come back and talk to you. But my father raised me the type of girl, because I'm an addict girl. So he raised me the type, when you have a problem situation in a relationship, don't publicize it. It's a private thing. You stay, you do it at home. Oh, that's right, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember one day I went to the restaurant with my father, and we sat across a couple and they were arguing. And when they left, my father told me, never publicize a relationship. Everything is private. It's between you and your partner. Your arguments, your fights, your problems, it's between you and him. If you need to go outside, you outside the family. And if he had that such a problem and he felt she did this, he should have moved on to his mother, his father, somebody, and talked to them. And came back and talked to his wife and his girlfriend, whoever she was, and had a conversation. But like Ocean said, he has a child mentality. For you to do that, it's, you have a child mentality. And I go through this all the time. I have arguments with people and I have I have problems. And I don't talk to them and I just stay to myself and be quiet. But for the fact that he decided to publicize what was going on, it was an choice. And he should never do that. I can argue my way for one time and we'll talk about it, but I tell him, I'm not having this conversation with you outside of school. We can have this conversation when I go home. You call, I call you, I text you, I go to your house. We talk, I don't like publicizing because it's none of people's business. So for him to make, for him to have the world see because he felt some type of way he felt hurt, he needed the world to see how hurt he felt was unnecessary. Because no one, no one knows you. No one knows what the relationship is. No one understands your problem. So for you to videotape it and then send it and post it everywhere and have your boy in the car with you laughing, uh, it's unnecessary because no one knows the relationship. No one knows what really, really happened. No one knows what goes on in your household but you and your girlfriend. No one is there recording you and watching you. It's not reality television. When it's private, it's private. And he publicized it for no reason. And I felt like if he had a problem with her, he should have handled it totally different. Being on, first of all, peeing on a female is disrespectful. Never should a male ever in their life put hands on a female. Which is because your mother raises you. You would never want to watch a man beat your mother. So if you sat there and you beat your female is disrespectful and you have no respect for yourself or no respect for authority or you know. And I feel like no man no man should ever be raised of having to put their hands on someone unless they watched it in their childhood and felt like that's the right thing to do. All right. So, Um, thank you guys for sharing. I do want to comment on um, Buche, and I'm sorry, what's your name, love? Shoshana's point. Um, I just would like to say that um, you said that it was a childlike mentality. It's human nature to react irrationally at any situation. So it doesn't matter the age. It, that anyone can say the first when you get upset, the first thing you do is you want to react. It may not be the most rational reaction. We have to we have to stop, take 10 seconds, and everyone in here, I'm 100% positive, is a believer in God. So we, whenever we get upset, we have to stop, take 10 seconds, pray, Lord, Father, please guide me in this situation, and then react. We have to take a rational approach to things. Rather than, we all, I, I, I would be lying if I said that I did, I don't, act irrational sometimes, I'm, hum I'm human. So we all have to, uh, when things like when things make us upset or things make us mad, we have to take 10 seconds, pray, and then react. Or even if it's 20 seconds a day, however, we need to react, we need to stop, pray, and then react. Um, I do also have a follow-up question to what um, 
Luke said. So your generation, and I say your, and I'll, matter of fact, I'll say our. I'm 26, for those that don't know. Um, so I'm kind of the one of the beginning generations of social media. So I, I know how social media affects my generation when it comes to relationships. And when I say relationships, I mean friendships, boyfriend, girlfriend, marriages, whatever. Relationships, everything in between, the human interaction. I would like to know from you guys, how does social media affect human interaction? Now, with you all in school, outside of school, in churches, what have you. So let me ask this question I'm going to pose it. So I'm going to ask two questions. So, what, remind me of your name again. What's your name? Shoshana. Shoshana. So what Shani said was, her dad told her, don't, don't, um, any issue you have in your relationship, keep it in your relationship. And if you need to talk about it, pretty much the people that you should talk about it, is your parents, your family, he should have gone to his mother, he should have gone to his father, his father. How many of you guys, to be honest, how many of you all feel that you have an adult in your life that you really can go to whenever there's an issue like that? No, I'll tell you guys here. It's, it's okay if you say no, that's the reality. All right, so how many don't have a person in their life that they feel comfortable to talk about? Really guys, 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 I need your participation. So let me ask you this. How many people have don't have someone in their life that they really can voice and there's an issue going on? Just one person? And everybody just doesn't care. <laughs> so tell tell us how it feels. Like you don't have that person. If you don't mind. If you don't mind. Wait, should I go on the microphone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you could project. No, 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 no. Go on the microphone. Can we start off projecting? Go on the microphone. Let's give it a hand. Let's give it a hand. Hi, my name is Zach, and I go to St. David's. So you ask me what? So, how, how does it make you feel, or if, since you don't have somebody that you feel that you can really voice your, your uh, your emotion to or your concerns to. Right, what so can you do? Can I give an example? Sure. All right, so recently during this week, uh, I would have told it, I had a case at school where um, I was supposed to get suspended for five days from school because I said something disrespectful to a teacher. So, um, what's it called? When they called my house about what I said that was disrespectful to the teacher, um, uh, and when I came inside the house, the first thing my mother asked me about on drugs, and I don't do no type of drugs at all. They didn't know this, but they felt that he still asked me that, and they still got upset at me. And then when I try to plead my case, they don't want to listen to anything I say. Like, and that's for every adult in my life. When I try to tell them something, they don't want to listen to me. They like to listen to the other adults. They like to treat me as a child, but like when it comes to doing adult responsibilities, that's when they want to treat me like an adult. But well, when I'm in the house, I'm still, I'm still a child somehow. I don't know how it changes. But um, what's it called? So like, my guidance counselor, who you're supposed to like go to when you feel like you have a problem, I can't go to my guidance counselor because she literally told me I'm the most annoying child that she has ever had. Oh, yeah. So like, I don't have a guidance counselor I can go to. My father doesn't live with me, but like, he's still in my life, but he doesn't live with me, so I can't really talk to him. And like, once my mother gets upset at me, he gets upset at me. So I basically don't have an adult I can talk to about my problems, so I usually just go to myself or like my friends, I guess. How many, how many other people feel that same exact way? Be, be careful, be honest, it's okay. How many other, no one, only three people, four people? Well, with one of those people, we will have to speak to that. Yeah, do you want you guys want to talk about it? Thank you, Thank you. Before you talk, there are some St. David's people in here. Are you guys listening? That's a problem. He goes to church. That's a problem. Action items. All right, go. No, I'm just saying. We're, we're keeping it real. Before, uh, no, before you respond, I would like to say this. No, 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 no. no. Hold on. Hold on. The brotherhood is there for that. Yeah, exactly. That's all I want to say. You can come and talk to us. All right. There you go. Um, can you hear me the question? No, so you, you said you can't.
feel the same way that you don't have an adult that you can really talk to. So share with us what you think, if you want to share, or just tell us how does that make you feel, or you know, how do you address it if, if there's no one there. Well, first of all, it makes me feel alone in this world that I don't have anyone to like, confide to. Because most, most of the time, my mom is like working when I usually get home from school. And also, I have a brother that has autism, so I can't really like, communicate with him like that. And also, um, my dad doesn't lose me either. Yeah, so, yeah, that, it's really hard to like communicate with one another with my friends, because that's why I'm usually like so quiet and shy. I have really no one to speak to. So let me, let me ask you guys a question. If we can fix this problem today, like go back to your different church and your, your family and fix this problem, what are some solutions? What can, what can we do or put in place that can easily fix this problem? Make it talk to them. Say it? Talk to them. You know, when children can call me and talk to them and get to the city and have conversations. So action item, we're going to make a talk group. Any of you that feel that they don't have the connection, I'd be willing to come to their church and um, you know try to help them work out some of these um, issues. So, you know. what what are some other items? That, that's a really good a suggestion about the talk group because, like you said, if there's not that environment or if there's not that medium for you to just really vent or talk, you know. How else are you going to say it? What other things that you guys think, you know, should be put in place? Um, yeah, um, I, also, I also feel that um, sometimes, like, like how some of you guys feel like we can't really talk to our parents or anything. Like, if we get a call home from school from, like, another teacher or something like that, then it's like, and the, parent, the parents are going to act, they're going to be mad, obviously, but they're mad they get mad because they're listening to the adults. They don't really want to listen. They, I feel that um, some of the adults don't want to listen to our side of the, of the um, story. They don't like, they feel, oh no, you're just a child. So the adult must be, if the adult is lying, then um, then I don't, I don't know. So it's like, cause some, sometimes I do feel like, oh, well, how come my teacher is calling about this and you don't want to listen to me sometimes? And I'm like, look, I just, I want to tell you my side of the story, but as a child, I feel like, okay, I can't, I can't tell you what I feel. That's. Okay, any other comments about this issue? I saw other hands before. Anybody else willing to share? How does social media affect how you guys interact with each other? So show of hands, how many people use social media? How many people have Instagram? How many people have Twitter? Facebook? Do you guys feel that you speak to your friends on social media or in person? In person or in text messages? Text messages? You, okay, so who sent text messages? Raise your hand. So all of you guys are speaking to your friends on a daily basis? How many of you guys feel that you can be 100% yourself around your friends? Okay. Um, Terry, you have something to share? Yeah, yeah, it was over You sure? <laughs> <laughs> so here's my question. What? 
how do you know you can be 100% yourself with your friends? Like, what about your friends and those relationships indicate that to you? Like, how do you know? Or, or maybe it's easier to say, like, with adults, how do you know you can't be that way with them? Okay, I feel like you know you can be yourself around other people when it's how they present themselves when they're with other people. Like when I personally met my best friend, I didn't go to her right away. I kind of sat back, I watched, I see how she interacts with other people, I see what she's like when she's not around the people she's around the most, and how she acts towards them. If she's the same person, or if she tends to change her personality around other people just to like um, appease the people that she's being around, and I feel like those are the people that you don't really want to get close to because they're only being that way because they feel like they're gonna, you're going to like them that way and that's the way they need to present themselves. And I feel like the people who put themselves out there just to be genuine and that's who they are around everybody and they don't feel like they have to sugarcoat everything they say to you, that's the people you can use yourself around. Because recently there was an incident in my school and this girl was the center of attention and everybody used to really really like this girl we used to be friends with her but as soon as something went down they all turned on her started calling her names and I was one of the people to actually continue my friendship with her and I just feel like the adults as well what they were saying about her and these are the girls teachers and if they're saying that around behind her back to other students I just feel like neither group can be trusted so when, when the question is about do you have an adult that you can to did you raise your hand I do you have more than one I do, but I choose not to talk to them. I can if I want to, but certain people, that there's just things that you have to keep to yourself. How many friends your age you have that you turn to? About two or three. Okay. No, it's not. <laughs> Since we're talking about uh, relationships and relationship status, how would you guys out there define healthy relationships? What do you think is a healthy relationship? Anybody? Wait, what did you say? Can you make a question, please? I said, what do you feel is a healthy relationship? How would you define a healthy relationship? In your opinions. In my opinion, I don't think you can put a label on a healthy relationship because it's different for each and every person. Right, but I'm asking individuals how they feel about what would be a healthy relationship. How would you describe it? I know it would be different for every show. Everybody's got different answers, but I just want to get an idea of what Okay. Maybe a father figure to guide him and show him what was right and how to treat 
babies. And now he has a son, a two-year, two-month-old son. And you know, if he doesn't change how he is, the son's gonna end up doing similar things that the, the dad did. So you know, we're trying to examine what would be healthy relationships. Anybody else have an idea of what you feel is a healthy relationship? Do you, how many of you guys know what domestic violence is? Domestic violence. Anybody want to come out and call us what? You raise your hand. Go, 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 go. Go on. Come tell us what you think domestic violence is. Come on. Now tell us. Let's do it right here. Let's do it right here. Come on. All right. So who wants to go out here and tell us who hasn't spoken yet? Who wants to volunteer and tell us what they think? I know what the rest of you are. I don't know what you are. with someone? Uh, yeah, so like when you're, I feel that if you are in a relationship that um, that you should be able to speak straight with the, with your partner, like because in that you're not supposed to hide anything from that person, that you shouldn't have to sugarcoat anything that you say to that person. Now it was first a friendship. You know, I had just moved to the JV and we became friends and we became best friends. So the relationship that we have was based on the best friend relationship. And I told him everything at the time, anything and everything. He knew everything that was going on, my household, my friends, anything. And when we became a relationship as us dating and talking and all stuff, and I started fading away and not telling him stuff. And we had a conversation the other day, and I told him that I'm not over with him or I don't know. I would tell him certain things, and he did the same thing to me. So I'm a very in close person, I don't tell people my father does that, unless it's my mother. It's the only person I tell to, I call her like my mom. But other than that, I would tell him things. He doesn't know what goes on in my household besides his mom. And I don't know what my mom, she was in Massachusetts. So. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. So, we're gonna, um, in speaking of my healthy relationships, who remembers? Chris Brown and Rihanna's situation. Who would like to share their point of view on the Chris Brown and Rihanna situation? I do 
enemies that resting on God's name is just walk away. Then after you cool down, both of you cool down, then you guys should start talking. Uh, that's what I would do, and that, that's what I'm always going to stick because that's how my father raised me. I never seen him put his hand on my mom. None of that. So I believe that it doesn't matter how bad the situation is, it should not be to a point where God should hit a woman, period. Amen. I believe in that. So, What we see at the end of a tumultuous relationship, we're talking about when you see them fighting, and it's usually what you see is the man hitting the woman. But I don't know, if I had a son, I, I, I'm not going to tell him to hit a woman. But at the same time, women shouldn't be hitting the man either. If you're fighting, you shouldn't be physically touching each other. And before you get to physical fighting, there's verbal domestic violence. If that's verbal abuse, that's the word term I'm looking for. So we need to watch how we talk to each other before all of this happens and identify our healthy relationships. Okay, just think about recently a popular movie you've seen or a popular TV show or a popular song. And think about if it has something to do with relationships. Does that give you healthy models, unhealthy models? Do you see yourself or other people modeling that stuff? And what is that saying about how we think about relationships? Sorry, go ahead. I go from Forest Hills High School, and um, I associate with other people, like me and my friends. We use a cheeky. This is <laughs> And cheeky is not a nice dude. What well, we like is music. <laughs> and like, he, he, talk, it, he talks about all this rubbish. And then actually, people actually listen to it and think that it's okay because they think it's cool because cheeky does it. Keep it in PG, like you give me a little more detail. Oh, PG. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'll say it was the B-word. Like, I've never seen him say a girl before. Like, like, he never said girl. Like, everything is the B-word. Like, never used the word female, girl. It's just the B-word. And like, he treats them like, he said you should get like eight females. Like, Every male should have eight females, eight females. And treat them like, I don't know, like anything. Because it's cool, it's cheeky, but we like his music, it goes hard. <laughs> we like his music, but he's got a nice dude. And like, and people are actually listening to it, that's the thing. And like, comprehend him, it's like, I'm not listening to I know where I come from, I know my heritage, and I, I know how to, like, 
had it when I'm around certain people. So when I'm with my friends, I can do whatever I want. But I'm with, when I'm with, like, in a certain place, in a certain like society, around certain people, I have to act normal and I have to act like myself. Oh, not like myself. What do you mean by normal? I say not normal, man. Simple. <laughs> So like, if you can answer this, I don't think you can be up too much longer, but this is definitely an open question. And, uh, my youth minister kind of decided to become a tank, so it's about So when you say you know, church music and then your other stuff, and you know who you are, and there are certain people in certain places. So one, like, I'm curious, it's like, is church one of those certain, certain places, certain best like I'm um, that way at that place? Um, and in general, you know, for those people in this, in the room that, do believe in God and do you kind of profess this Christian faith? Is that just like a component of your identity, or are you thinking about, you know, is that the umbrella that the rest of your identity falls under? Like how, like how do you understand being a person of faith and being outside of the rest of the world? Uh, okay, so a person as a Christian, I think yes, I am a Christian. But I don't want to explain. Okay. Yeah, it's not a discussion. I don't want to say that it's like a little part of me. That yes, I'm a Christian. That's that's part of my identity. And it's all the other stuff that's added to it. So like I'm a fun out of person. But I'm not the only one. And I I talk to my friends about Christianity and stuff like that. We talk about so sometimes we talk about God, but it's not like for all the time I'm gonna be like, oh that's like Oh, let's play church music at a party or something like that. Like, now sometimes we just want to like, have fun, be outgoing, and we're not always like. Sometimes you have, you have to bring Christianity into something you do, but sometimes you just express yourself and how you feel. I don't. Know. <laughs> I saw this whole yeah, a couple of hands. I'm from Aki, and I don't live in New York. I live in Jersey with my dad. So when, you know, I come visit my grandmother, I make sure I go to church every Sunday. I might not live with my grandmother, but I come every Sunday. My friends are like, why are you going to go with me? I gotta go to church. Because I like to, you know, listen to the messages. So keep God is the biggest part of my life. You know, when I get fed to my dad, he better let us go be praying. If something happens, I always look to God to ask questions. This is the biggest part of me. That's who I am. God comes first in my life. I've been through a lot. Like the first person I go to is God, and I talk to him. So he's the biggest part of my identity. I do other things outside, but I always make sure he's included to anything I do. Before I track me, I pray God, make sure everything was fine, you know, before I go away, stuff. So when, you know, I come and visit with my grandmother, it's, I always make sure I go to church. I always make sure I'm up on time. I always make sure I sit, listen to what's going on because that's just the type of person that I am. I grew up in that household where church is the biggest part. I mean, God is the biggest part of who you are. Like, I have a friend who doesn't believe in God. And we have these conversations, like, why she doesn't believe and why I believe. And we sit down and we talk about it. And she says her opinions, I say my opinions. And, you know, you think to yourself, well, that's true. And, you know, we start having these conversations. And you go to Sunday school, and you have those conversations with the person. Like, you know, how did he walk in the water? How did he do this? How did he do that? Where is he? When is he coming? Like, all these questions. And I have those questions with her, and we talk about them. And then you go to Sunday school, and you talk to the person that Sunday school is directed, and you have those conversations with them. But, if, I mean, for my identity, I'm very old school. I'm not a 90s lady, but I listen to a lot of 90s music. So I don't really associate myself with the type of music now, I do, I listen to it, but I listen to 90s music because it has the message in the soul. And I go to church, I haven't gone to church for a long time, I'm bad, you know, hurt myself a little bit, but um, it's hard to, you know, have this conversation with people and go to church. I, I do it every weekend, go from Jersey to Queens, like that. Just because it, it, it should be the big part of someone, whether, you know, you go to church here and there, you do that. He should only be a part of you if you believe in that faith. Well, that's all I do.